have a variety of speakers um, uh, present. Um, uh, here we have a um, uh, young faculty. Um, and this one also has an interesting connection with us. Um, he graduated from uh, you know the AI studio two years ago. And uh, what is uh, what is very exciting is that um, he got uh, uh, a tenure tech faculty position at a tier one university without doing a postdoc. So that was quite a bit of achievement. And um, um, I also um, wanted uh, not to, um, you know, kind of discuss a lot on the generative AI. So he'll, he'll be kind of addressing issues that uh, are not solely focused on the generative AI part of it. So with that, I will pass on to Manas. Take over, Manas. Okay. Oh. Okay. Uh, this is... Okay, perfect. <clears throat> So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, coming to the talk and listening to me. Today, I have, uh, I have uh, uh, something to share on uh, a very interesting problem that we started working uh, uh, quite some time back, but we are still uh, uh, improving this interface. Uh, which is we considered as a matching of support seekers and support providers. We looked at Reddit as one of the platform uh, for this purpose. And am I audible? Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So uh, we we looked at Reddit as one of the platform because uh, Reddit is one of the uh, areas where, or as a platform in social media, which has huge engagement. Uh, among people and uh, specifically when the cases are about crisis. So this talk will be talking up, will be focusing on support seeker and support provider matching on Reddit as one of the platforms. And uh, this uh, consider this talk to be a sort of an uh, sort of an idea of how we can mold uh, some real time conversations uh, to do something in data science for social good. Okay. So the perspective of the talk today is I will just talk about a little bit of Reddit, Reddit sphere from the perspective of social good, something that would be more inspiring and would be helpful for you in getting out the data uh, and looking at some of the challenging problems which are beyond the standard data sets in artificial intelligence. We'll talk about a problem statement of what are we chasing in this talk. Uh, we'll see some of the simulations just to understand that uh, if we are not have the if we don't have that level of high quality data uh, or high large scale data what are the uh, cases uh, or what are the different scenarios that we can actually opt for in in, our, in order to uh, uh, address those challenges we'll look at the explainable data set creation challenge how do we create such an explainable data and then we'll look at the artificial intelligence algorithm for matching the support seekers and support providers. And there will be a series of evaluation on this, on this particular aspect, just to see how well the algorithms are performing. So let's just jump into the state, uh, to the topic of the Reddit sphere. And uh, this is, might be redundant for a few people, but I'm pretty much sure there will be something exciting as well. So uh, the Reddit discussion is pretty humongous when I'm talking about in the context of healthcare, right? And if you look at social media uh, uh, of Reddit platform in, in terms of the mental health, for instance, uh, you will see that there's a startling around 500 million uh, users. I was, I was, this talk was like this, uh, this data is from the last year and they already crossed 500 million in, in the in their large uh, user base already. So this was an expected uh, number in 2025, but they have already crossed this number at the moment. The topics uh, are on on the Reddit span variety of domains. They can be in uh, social media. It can they can be on misinformation. They can be about uh, Biden. They can be about Trump. They can be of, of other entities as well. But what we really are focusing on in the is is on the healthcare side. We saw we saw that there are around 80 percent of the time. Within the healthcare community space, there are 80% of the time where people are communicating on such platforms, right? And they are not only looking for solutions 
for their health conditions, but they are also providing advices. Now, these advice is not uh, all the time coming from an expert, but this is coming from the people who are closely monitoring the social media feeds on the Reddit and then making their own understanding by the Reddit information as well as Google search to come up with the with the response. A very quick overview of this uh, platform uh, that I'm going to show you is an anxiety platform. And this is again a date back uh, 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 snapshot, but right now it is easily crossing. So at this moment, this community has around 300,000 uh, subscribers. So what we have seen in this Reddit platform is that there is a question that a person asks, which is the main post. And then there is a series of comments about that particular post, right? And there are certain rules of this uh, uh, in this platform, which uh, uh, adheres to whether the response is, is uh, good or bad. And we want to use it to filter out some of the irrelevant content that are still uh, circling around in the Reddit, uh, in this anxiety uh, community. So uh, they, this, what you see over here is a, is a question being asked by an individual. Right, and there are certain uh, there are certain aspect or there are some user interactions on this particular post. So if you see on the left, there is thirty ups and downs. There's an arrow going up and there's an arrow going down, and there's a number thirty on it. That means that there there is thirty is a positive side. That means thirty people actually rated high to this particular query, and there are there are other people who will be uh, go giving ups and downs, upwards and downwards for other comments as well. Right, so in this uh, and at this point, this post has eighty nine percent upvoted uh, information. So this uh, this question is really important to eighty nine percent of the people who are there in this community. So uh, it's like this: we crawl data from other uh, uh, subreddits on on the which is an, uh, a subreddit is a term which we call uh, which is being named uh, or which is being defined as the community on on Reddit. And we crawl data from different communities on, on Reddit, and which is stop self-harm, bipolarity, anxiety, and all different categories of mental health conditions. These numbers are pretty old. Uh, you can always you can easily assume that at this moment we are talking about 10 times the number of people who were there from last year. So What's so fascinating about uh, this uh, uh, Reddit sphere was not about just, just this mental health community, but how the pe people in this mental health community group together to form a new environment called a new community called the coronavirus. So as you, during the time of 2020, 2021, 2022, where, and nowadays as well, but not on a relatively lower scale, but there are people who are talking about coronavirus conditions talking about uh, uh, lockdown, talking about uh, isolation, talking about vaccines and many other cases. All of these discussions were put together, were grouped together into a, a community called the R Coronavirus, where R stands for the subreddit. And what we observed that during the time of the coronavirus, when it was just starting to emerge, we saw that they, this community were, had initially 2000 people but it spanned, it expanded to 2.4 million in just few months. So this made us feel that this community or this platform is really pivotal in understanding some dynamic changes. Major uh, policies that people make do have some connections, do have some links to the information being communicated in, in, the, in the Reddit sphere. So let's take an example of of a of a uh, uh, of a post where a person says that I am I am a nurse and it happens it helps with uh, uh, what they said that this particular platform of of coronavirus seems to be useful in 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 advising or suggesting people with some remedies. They are let's say a a, a professional therapist over here talked about in, in a, on a public platform that this community really helped her. Uh, address a lot of the concern for the of the people when the coronavirus virus was actually at the, its peak. Uh, so a careful inspection of this COVID nineteen uh, uh, situation or, or this platform during with the Reddit, we could see that in that platform when it was starting to emerge, there were sixty four moderators or the people who are governing this particular platform. When I say moderators, these are people who are doing a service. On this platform, and they are—it's a non-profit uh, 
uh, service just to help people. So the people who are who are the moderators on this platform are PhDs, students, they are masters, uh, students in various universities, they can be nurses, they can be general practitioners or internal medicine people, or they can be an epidemiologist or a mental health provider as well. So on this entire data set, we saw that people were talking about various coping mechanisms uh, for COVID-19, such as meditation, Dungeons and Dragons, uh, Ludo King and many other games, and uh, on maybe an online streaming platforms. And they also talked about a lot of issues as well. So you see over here, there is a, a very natural two communities coming up uh, uh, and during these conversations. They were simple conversations. If you look at them at and from a from a distant, they are just conversations. But when you start to do some kind of data mining uh, uh, strategies, or you are using some kind of data mining uh, approaches, then you try to figure out that there are two different communities uh, being formed in this dynamic conversation systems. One is for the coping mechanisms, and other is for the issues. So, what are we looking for in this entire? humongous space of, of large, diverse, multifaceted, multi-topic uh, conversational uh, uh, streams. What are we looking for in this in this uh, systems? We are looking for how many people got help. We are looking for are the people who are seeking help got the help in a timely manner. That's the bigger concept. There are a lot of conversations, there are a lot of information flowing on this platform but what are we what are we focusing on we are focusing on the scenarios where people sought were seeking some help and they got the help in a timely manner and who did they talk to did they talk to clinicians did they, did they talk to an expert expert in uh, experienced individuals did they talk did they talk to nurse and what are the topics that they talk about right for example this what you see on the in front of you is just a uh, uh, an example just an example not created one, but real example about people talking about opiates, crippling alcoholism, smoking weeds and relapse, and how they got helped from the people on the Reddit community during the COVID-19 scenario. And they got, they had a positive impact uh, because of those conversations. Now, but the challenge here is this, how many of those people from this entire humongous 2.4 million and more set of a, a, a community, how many people actually got the, the right care? That's the question. That's the question that we are after, right? And can we do this that if let's say 2% people got the care, can we go from 2% to 20%? Can we go from 2% to let's say 25% or 30% or 50%? That is an acceptable range because 2% is very small of a 2.4 million uh, of population. Right, so this is just an uh, 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 an uh, another ex use case and an example of the same scenario that I just talked about. Right, this is from the anxiety. The previous was substance use. Uh, there's uh, there's another case of a depression, and there are various advices that that are that people have covered. These information that you see over here are coming from a data mining approach. We are mining the data. We are finding that what topics people are talking about. How do you group those topics, and how do you connect? that there is a conversation of this kind, that there is a uh, there is a negative question, that means a person seeking a help, and there is a positive reply, a person providing a help. A very simple, uh, a kind of like a, a two polarity uh, conversation where one is negative seeking help, and another is a positive providing the help. So what we saw that when we started crawling this across 1 million users, we already crossed 10 million in conversations from this uh, from this community. That means we are looking at not only a small individual, we are looking at 1 million population across the world. We're not looking at uh, people in United States. We're not looking at people in particular regions in Europe. We're looking at the globe over here. And there are tons of people talking about in different uh, contexts, talking about different topics and all together. And, you know, so this is exactly a real world use case of where we can we are looking at how does AI or machine learning can be used, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning can be used uh, in, a, in, a, in a data science for social good uh, fashion. Sorry. Oh, sorry, my bad. So we are interested in that we want to match the support seekers and support providers. That means people who are seeking for help and the people who are, have the capability and the time to provide the help to see each other in the platform. And we want them to be talking to each other uh, uh, 
more more profoundly and and easily as opposed to just put down put down your query and then uh let's see when the when the sun shines and they get the response the current state is that there is moderators on the platform definitely but the moderators don't do matching they are only there only to evaluate the content they do not allow this kind of a they do not have the capacity and the bandwidth to do the matching the proposal is that we want to develop an ai system that will assist these moderators so that they can they can also facilitate this matching of support seekers and support providers now an ai system can work by itself but the question is that how do you validate that the response provided by an ai system is correct right so then there is a situation that arises that you want the system to be human assisted or human accompanied uh, AI system and not simply an AI system driven by itself. So what we looked at over here is we started developing a simple platform, right? A simple use case of how this thing should work, right? This, what you see over here are some wires, wires frames, some sketchings that we designed based on our understanding of the platform of coronavirus and see how are the communications happening, right? And then how do we get the, the feedback of the user that they are satisfied with the response? So two things, we want to observe uh, the communication patterns and see that how frequently support seekers uh, question is being addressed by the support providers, how frequently. And the second thing is that was the support seeker satisfied with the response? Right, so that's the right hand side. On the left hand side, we was we were looking at that uh, what type of uh, support providers. So left hand side, I'm talking about left hand side now. The right hand side is is just about frequency of those conversations and how we can find the right support provider. Uh, for uh, how can we uh, uh, assess that whether the response provided by the support provider is appropriate for the support seeker. That's on the right hand side. On the left hand side, what we are looking for is the following, that given a problem of the support seeker, which support provider is more relevant? There will be multiple support providers, support providers who have uh, who have exactly the experience of that question. They are really on bang on for that particular question. Or there are people who are being just informative or the people who are uh, uh, are just informative of that space and they can they can provide some pointers to help. Or the third category of the people would be, they are just emotional. They have an emotional connect to you. They don't know about that problem very well. They can uh, be sympathizing with you or something of the sort. And then there are people who really don't know about this domain, right? And they don't really have very strong attachment to this person who is seeking the support, but they have information that they want to communicate. Those are the people who are neutral. So we have four or five categories of the people that we can uh, we can look around uh, for this uh, for in this dynamic sense in this in this dynamic uh, conversational environment. So what was the roadmap that we now we have the solution we have a a very wireframe high level structure of what we are we are we want from this this humongous large scale data. Now let's have the roadmap sketched for this purpose. So there are certain uh, certain things that we really want to do. We want to do a, some some kind of an initial simulation to figure out that what we are proposing on this data set is actually possible, right? How do we how do we uh, look at that simulation? The second is that is the simulation uh, cognizant of what's happening on the Reddit, or is just completely too indifferent, two different things, and we are we fail to simulate a, a, a real world environment. Then once we succeed, if we succeed, we want to look at the data, we have to crawl it, uh, do some kind of labeling on it. And then so that we can have an AI system that can be designed to do a support seeker and support provider matching. Okay, so first thing, first we started looking at a simulation just to look at the simulation of this of this design. So a simulation is nothing but a, gen a program that we, that, we, that we use to model the real world, real life situations right just to gain an insight of what is happening in that real world situation and how an ai system if developed to resolve some of the issues in that real life problem will be successful so that's what the 
uh, idea or the notion for real simulation is. Then we want to look at uh, how well this AI system can be can be doing this job. So we, what we did was the simulation is we simulated Reddit users as SS and SP. We just looked at, okay, there are people who would have a support seeking question. That means those questions would be all on the negative side because they are seeking support. And the providing the people who are providing supports are providing will be on the uh, positive side. They will be having more positive traits in this. And we want to see that how fast an algorithm in AI or in, in general would enable uh, 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 an attachment or a connection between the support seekers and support providers. At this moment, guys, we are talking about just a simulation. We are not, we are not exploring the real world data at the moment. So this is just a, a, a very snapshot of the of the a simulation experiment that we did, where we saw that uh, we let's just make some rules of that we have learned that uh, whenever the person is talking about uh, uh, alcohol recovery, then the support providers might talk about alcohol. Or, uh, so if a person is seeking support for alcohol, then he should be looking for a support provider who knows alcohol recovery, who knows alcohol addictions and things of the nature. So we kind of make some rules to analyze uh, this kind of a dynamics. Right, so first of, in the first uh, simulation experiment, what we found that uh, when we have this kind of a support seeker, support provider matching uh, scenario or this interaction, the models are uh, uh, tend to be at random. If I don't, if I don't, uh, 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 let's say, uh, let me give you a simple example, right? Let's uh, let's say you do not have any specific rule of support. Who, how do you select support providers for a support seeker? And you pick the value, uh, the person randomly from the, from a pool of uh, of people uh, you you're from when i say pool of people that means i don't know who are support providers over there just a pool of people right and i'm randomly picking then there's a possibility that the ratings of of that person will not be so strong right uh, the ratings would be relatively low for uh, for those uh, for those people right and the time to get a person that is very much targeted to that query targeted the, to the query of support pro, a support seeker would be very, very high. The time would be very high. So what you see over here is that we had, we have, we really found a person of, of, uh, of importance, but that took a lot of time. It took more than 20 iterations, 20 iterations to come up with a person who is actually relevant to that support seeker. So we did 20 rounds of filtering to come up with that right person. Right now, what if we have some preferences? What we know, what over, what if we know that who are we looking for? Right in that scenario, the the connection becomes little better. So this is what we consider as a probabilistic greedy that we know who we want to select. Right, let's say in this case we say that okay, there are some uh, there are some people who are very spontaneous on Reddit. They keep on tracking Reddit every now and then and they are really much relevant, available over there on the Reddit platform. We want to pick these people. So first was the random selection. Now we know that among that pool, we want to people who are constantly present in the Reddit space, right? And we want to pick those people because they're available over there. They will give the response in a timely manner, right? The another case was when we look at these people with preferences, right? Some people say that, oh, I am a, I am a nurse, I am a, I am a nurse, I am a nurse practitioner, I am a clinician, or I am a person who has experience in alcoholic recovery and things of that nature. We consider that as their preferences. And we want to use that to filter out people who are relevant to this query, who are not relevant to this query. That's what we want to show as, well, that's what we want to study as, as an experiment three. So what we found that when we are doing uh, an experiment on uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, when when we say that when we do it an experiment based on the rating, which is the probabilistic greedy, the plot that you see on the left hand side is on the probabilistic greedy. We say that people pick that person and they lose they they lose that person because we are just looking at people just based on their scores, right? How frequently they are available on the Reddit. That's what we are picking up. We are not picking whether they have the expertise to answer the question. So you see over here, there is a lot of zigzag, zigzag 
design on the left hand side, which is the probabilistic greedy. Whereas on the right hand side, you see that there's a smooth plot saying that when we have user preferences, when we classify them based on their, their choices of how, uh, whether they are able to answer that question or not, it's a pretty much smooth uh, curve with less of zigzags compared to on the probabilistic greedy side. Right. And most importantly, the relative to the ratings are a little low on the on the right hand side, but uh on the longer term, these people remain with that with that support seeker for a longer period of time. Whereas on the probabilistic greedy, people don't stay with the support seeker for a longer period of time. It's just that spot uh, uh, that that point, that particular instant of time when they are getting that uh, when they are getting that support. So what we found from this set of experiments is that people who use uh, who the people who recommended uh, as good support providers to support seekers, if we take into account their user perspectives, right, then the ratings are pretty stable, right? The the SP the support providers are not idle when they are being matched based on their perspectives, their preferences, or their features. Whereas if we do random or we do probabilistic greedy then support providers are there, they will just give you a help, but then they will disappear. They will not be there with you for a longer period of time. The reason is because they don't know your domain, right? They don't know your query variable. They're just people of, of, I would say, of this category, which I just talked about, uh, which is, uh, where is it? The neutral category, the fifth category in this wireframe. Okay. So this was an a simulation experiment. We saw that with these approaches, we can probably group people. We can we can say very loud and clear that support seekers should provide should talk to these set of support providers. Right now, we have defined the proof of concept, but the Reddit is even more complex. Right, you can do a lot of simulations uh, on the top of the surface, but the problem is even more deeper than what we see in the simulation space. Right. So what we did was we started crawling the data of the Reddit users, right? Uh, uh, and we want to see that how many times the users are seeking support and the users who are providing support. So what we saw that there are two sort of communities by the time we actually sat on uh, to work on this, uh, this, uh, uh, this particular use case, we saw that there is already a community that is shaping up. That community is COVID-19 support. That was not there before when we started this project. By the time when we started working on this project, we saw another community started to shaping up. This community was on support. There are only people who are providing support over there. There is no discussion. But that gives us a good sense of think that can we ask these people to communicate with each other? Can we say that uh, uh, let's just person A from this community of COVID-19 support should talk to the person B of this community to provide support? Right. So this is just some numbers that we looked at it, that we have found so many auth users. We looked at their posts and we saw that people who are seeking support, they have generally a question mark or they have some kind of a negative sentiment in their questions. And those are considered uh, the people who are seeking support. I'm just giving a high level view, but uh, there are more detailed part of it that we will go into the subsequent slide. I'll just jump onto the main factor of this project, which is the feature engineering and the user labeling. The reason we are really interested and we are fascinated about the feature engineering and user labeling says case was we use domain knowledge in this process. What is this domain knowledge and why are we using it, for instance? So we considered our domain structure or our domain knowledge into three into four specific buckets. The first bucket was we want to look at event specific features. That means we look, we want to people who are talking, who are seeking support only for business closure, uh, school closure, lockdown, shelter in place, or hospitalization. That's the policies of the COVID-19. Then we are looking, we want to look for the people who are looking for anxiety and depression. We have created a lexicons for anxiety and depression using clinical knowledge, which are basically clinical words in specific, let's say panic attacks, uh, uh, nervousness, uh, overly sweating, right? Scratching your hands and things of that nature we consider those as, as the domain-specific filtering mechanism. Then we looked at whether the person is talking about himself or whether the person is talking about himself or herself or they're talking about other people uh, as a third person. 
So we want to focus on first person specifically. We do not want to focus on if a person is a mediator to other person's query. We are only looking at the first person thing. And the last part was, what are we really looking for in their content? We are looking for sentiments. We are looking for emotions. What is their focus, right? What are their cognitive features? And what are their biological features and the psycholinguistic features? So these features that you that we gathered are all coming from the uh, lexicon that we have built in the past. So we use this kind of a mechanism only to narrow down our search space because 10 million conversations can actually make your make a human bewildered, let alone an AI model. So we really don't want the AI model to give overly uh, wrong information without any grounding in the domain. So that's why we want to be, uh, we want to bracket ourselves into a very specific space. And then we can always expand it uh, onto the multiple, uh, onto a larger population, right? So this is just a simple mechanism of how we did the the filtering uh, uh, structure in in the uh, in the context of the uh, space. This is for the anxiety. This is for the depression. And how are we doing the filtering uh, for the anxiety case? And how we are doing for the depression case? And we have depression specific lexicons and anxiety specific lexicons that we used uh, to make this filtering very loud and clear. Okay. So based on this filtering, we saw we saw some numbers, and these numbers will not be very very strong. I'm talking about a data science uh, for social good and social good numbers are no are not so beautiful as benchmark data sets or, or playground data sets, right? So these numbers, even I would say any number that is above 10% is, uh, is a really good number because that is, uh, that is sufficiently on a larger scale that will seek a lot of uh, support to the human or the humanity, right? So in my understanding, these numbers were pretty good in, in the context that there were certain level of processes that were affected uh, or that were discussed when a person is saying that I'm feeling anxious or I'm feeling depressed. And then the, when they are saying that they are talking about anxiety and depression, which set of uh, policies of COVID-19 were they referring to in their post? So that's the above uh, uh, heat map and the bottom heat map is about what are they discussing? So the, the bottom part is that what are their uh, their social processes, their emotional processes, their social state of mind, their cognitive state of mind got affected. So that's the bottom most part. Which policy of COVID-19 affected that? That's on the top. Okay. So what are this? Uh, what are we? Uh, what we found is just a simple example that people are talking about business closure and anxiety. They had manic episodes, and they talked about that we. I'm having a manic episode, and I'm. Uh, and it's happened because of the closing of down of my business. Uh, and there are other cases of lockdowns and uh, they are connected to addictions. Uh, shelter in place also co uh, considered a, was connected to anxiety and depression. And then there were general COVID conversations about the depression as well. Sorry. Right. So uh, this was for the lexicons and for the uh, first person, we had another set of uh, uh, simple code written for extracting uh, 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 like rational thought processes, well, which is re represented by subordinate consumptions. I would recommend if someone wants to get, de get uh, details of this point, I would like them to read the, the bottom most paper about let me tell you about your mental health. We have provided a detailed version of how these lexicons were created and how they were being used uh, for, uh, for domain specific feature engineering and, and user labeling. Okay. Uh, okay. So these are just uh, different uh, segments of code that are that are being used or designed for uh, for extracting those pieces of information, right? So after we have done this point, we want to release this kind of a data set, but we also want to uh, examine that can we use something outside to do the labeling? Now, user labeling is not an easy task. Is, is a very cumbersome, costly uh, task, specifically if you consider Amazon Mechanical Turk is, right? So Amazon Mechanical Turk is a platform or AMT is a platform where you have users who you give the data set, who, which are unlabeled. You ask them, this is how you need to label and they label for you with a, with a specific charge, right? So 
we want to construct a gold label, a gold standard label data set, but we don't have that many resources for constructing a gold label data set. So what we did in return was we looked at this particular op uh, public uh, data set on, on suicide, where we have people who are supportive and we have people who are already, uh, who have already discussing about suicidality or suicide related con uh, concerns or suicide risk related concerns. So we already have people who are being labeled like that, right? So we took this data set and we see that, can we do some kind of training of a model that will learn to separate supportive users from us users who are seeking support. Supportive users are people who are providing support. I really don't care to what level of depth they are providing support. I just want to know that they are providing support. And there are people who are talking about their conditions. They are outside this label. So we found that with this data set was pretty good. And, and to our amaze, even a simple model like a logistic regression with good embedding, uh, good embedding approaches seems to perform very well compared to any other model that we tried out uh, in, in, in this context. So this is one piece of advice. When we are dealing with data science for social good, simple is the best solution, uh, not the complicated versions of it, because that's very hard to handle and hard to justify as well to the end user. Okay, so there are a lot of questions why logic regression worked, support vector machine worked, stochastic gradient descent classifier worked, but not a lot of other complicated systems worked for us. Only simple things worked for us. Okay, that's just a piece of an advice that you should always start simple in the context of this real world challenges. So once we did this classification, so what we saw over here is a number in terms of the AUC plot. Now, what we saw that, let's just look at this particular design in terms of a, a, a sub kind of a spaces where we say that what are the positive people and what are the negative people, how close they are, how far they are, how farther they are, right? Is there any cluster found and things of that nature? So this is a tool that we use called TSNE that allows you to visualize uh, your classification or your classes uh, on, on, a, on a coordinate space. So what we did was, so this is the training, right? And this is the real testing. We tested those, you, we tested this model over our, our data set and we saw that the anxiety people are more more tighter uh, together with with the supporters support seekers and support providers whereas in the in the context of depression you can fairly see that support provide support seekers are pretty separated away from the support providers they are not really tightly uh, connected to each other as opposed to in anxiety right so this is a, this has some quite findings this finding says also says that the people who might be asking support uh, might also be providing support somewhere elsewhere, right? Whereas in depression, we can say that the provide people who are asking for support may not be providing support to uh, to the seekers, right? So we did some kind of a formulation for this and some visualization of this particular platform. And what we saw that the best strategy to learn for a, a model in the, of this kind is to do a contrastive learning. We use a contrastive loss to to learn that given a user, we want to see that if he's a support seeker, he should be more towards a negative class rather than a positive class because positive class is meant for a support provider and a negative class is meant for a support seeker. So we want that a person who is seeking support should be more closer to a support seeker as opposed to, uh, is more closer to the negative class as opposed to a positive class. So that was our, our understanding that let's, let's just label them uh, by our intuition, right? So, uh, and a person who is providing support is uh, belong to the support class and he's not belonging to the negative class. Now the distance between these two people should not be farther away because once a person who is support providing the support and the one person who is, who is seeking the support, their difference, their semantic difference between the two should not be farther away because that's where you are grouping they're putting, they, that's where you're putting them together in, 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 uh, in applications, right? So that's what you want to do. And what you want to do is that you want to uh, bring this connection closer to each other and the time to match this particular person needs to be reduced. So your minimization problem is that you want to minimize the time to find this right person. And you want to also minimize the distance between uh, uh, this particular, uh, between these two uh, people, right? 
Okay. So what we found that by using this approach of of this of this kind of a learning, we were trying to we can fairly see that a nice grouping started to shape. So what you see over here is the gray dots. So the gray dots are the people who are who are there who are who we do not who we did not classify at this moment uh, with our data model. And thus the blue circles that you see are the people who are uh, seeking support, and the stars are the people who we who are algorithm are labeled as support providers for those people, right? So if you see that stars are pretty closer to these uh, uh, blues for some cases, for some cases, they're a little bit farther away. So you really need to do this process on a multiple, on a larger scale to figure out that how well they do it. But majority of the case, I would say the stars really came closer to the circles because stars are the support providers and circles are the support seekers, right? So, uh, there are different ways we can improve this classification further. We say that people who are uh, providing support can, would provide would be informative. They would be more. Uh, uh, they will have some similar thoughts, and people who are uh, contradictory will have some negative negation terms in their responses. So these are just kind of our other ways of of uh, improving this design of 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 uh, classifying, or I would say. Uh, making some rules of how the support providers should look like, right? So this is an example outcome of a support uh, seeker who is talking about uh, his PTSD uh, and, uh, and oh, sorry, her PTSD. And she is uh, talking about, uh, she's also talking actively looking at the psychologist and a lot of other concerns have been discussed. And this is a recommended support uh, providers that the algorithm has uh, has reported. Now there are certain categories that certain words or or entities or concepts uh, the model focused on in examining the support seeker and providing the support providers as a closed uh, 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 recommendations, right? And we also found that this is a support provider which is not supportive enough, but he's he has similar problems, right? So that means that he would provide uh, support in the form of uh, uh, what do you call an experience. Let's say you are not an experience of, uh, of a particular domain, but you have seen that domain in your classes. You have studied about it, so you can speak about it. That's what uh, the similarity uh, or similar SP means. This is another set of examples, and we have a support uh, SPs and we have similar SPs as well. So what are, why are we giving similar SPs? The reason is that maybe the supportive person is a top choice, but he might not be available. So you need to also have a second best uh, choice uh, at every time for every uh, query of a support seeker, right? And then there is another category that we found was called the informative. So we kind of categorize this as, as kind of like if a support, support provider who is supportive, but he's very busy, he cannot respond. A similar SP would be, would be called to share his experience, his or her experience. If he's be he or she's busy, then we're looking for the informative users who might also help in, in helping the support seeker. So uh, overall the algorithm seems working very well with these different rules and considerations. And we are, we if you see on the uh, top uh, most on the left hand side, we see different clusters of the people. What you see over there on the plus size are the support uh, uh, providers and the blue dots are the support seekers. On the first uh, iteration on the right hand side on the top, you see that the support provider starts to match with support seekers. In the bottom left, you see that this match is becoming more and more tighter. And on the right on the rightmost side, you see that they are well aligned, relatively well aligned compared to other people with different set of rules. So we keep on changing these rules of support providers and we saw better and better uh, matching between the two. This is just coming out from domain specific uh, feature engineering uh, using user labeling mechanism using another data set that is gold standard and using standard mechanism of machine learning with, with a custom loss function, which we designed for this particular task, right? So we have done with the formalization. We identified the SPs. Now we have also looked at some of the visualization now let's look at how this platform uh, span out for on a larger audience. We put the system onto uh, onto a uh, onto a platform where we ask the people that they ask a question, 
right? And they choose the category, which question they are looking for, which question, uh, which particular mental health condition describes their questions the, the best. And you'd like to figure out that which set of users would be uh, would be more relevant uh, for this uh, for these conditions. So we recommended series of users. We don't know their names. We just give the link IDs or the user IDs that they have on the Reddit. So this seems to be a very nice platform uh, for quick matching of support seekers and support providers in, on a Reddit space, right? And we did a small evaluation with some subject matter experts, all taken from the Reddit community of coronavirus. And we, I would not be too happy of, of a score, but we saw that at least there is a plausible solution of 7.2 score uh, rating out of 10. That means we did some wrong uh, recommendations, but if we, if I stop, if I lose, lose enough this recommendation, if I tell the evaluator that no, do not evaluate on the, uh, uh, on the informative or the similar users only evaluate. So I ask them to only evaluate the supportive users. We do not want them to evaluate if you have, if you have re reported supportive users are the second best or the third best. We want the support use, supportive users to be the first one to reach out to. That's why the score was, I was, that's my understanding. That's why the score was relatively uh, on, a, on a, between uh, less than eight or less than 80%, I would say. There are other works that were designed, but they were all uh, work related to some discussions and some empirical studies. They were not uh, exactly uh, very uh, practical and, and uh, more, uh, useful compared to what we, we what we discussed and what we proposed in this particular work there are a lot of resources that were developed and they were used in this in this line of work and they were used in embedding in improving the classifier and overall structures and you are free free to free, uh, you are free to use those data sets in their own your own machine learning task and with this i'm open to any questions there are All students, any questions, comments? Was it too much? No? Hope you're not doing some homework. All right, well then, um, no? <laughs> so, okay. All right. Well, so yeah, um, um, this kind of, uh, you know, deals with more of a kind of content you get on social media in the last five years uh, or a little more. Um, it has been a huge area of uh, attention because, um, uh, the, um, you know, access to, there was a very good access to the data. Um, now, uh, you might want to just note that um, social media is relatively still new, even though it kind of, you guys might have grown up with it. In that, uh, I think that Twitter uh, became available in 2008. And my, uh, and one of my peer students uh, did her first PhD uh, in, in generally, one of the first PhD in social media data analysis in 2010. Um, and it has, although lately, so, and there was a golden period for working with the social media data. Uh, lately, and particularly last year, last one or two years, um, use of social media has become very difficult. Uh, first, uh, Twitter stopped making it publicly available. Um, and it make, you know, you can access Twitter data, but you have to pay a lot of money and academics can't afford it. Um, and uh, number, uh, Facebook never gave, uh, you know, uh, or Instagram never gave, gave uh, free access to data for research. So you could not do that. Reddit uh, used to give, and I think Reddit data now cannot still be, now, now that is constrained, right? Uh, access to Reddit data. Yeah. So Reddit data can also be also, so uh, when Manas did the work and some other students did the work, um, uh, it was still a time where we could have un unfettered use of social media, access to social media data. 
Um, there's another, uh, you know, example of uh, a, seek, sub, a seeker and supplier that comes to my mind. Uh, that was done by Hemant Purohit. Yeah. Uh, and in his case, um, uh, he looked at um, requests for help and uh, offer for help during uh, disasters, disaster events. So um, uh, I remember uh, working with 2012 uh, uh Kashmir floods. Uh, then there is a, a state of Uttarakhand, and we work with that. We work with Chennai floods uh, around again the early parts of 2010s. Um, and in those days, um, you know, uh, anytime the uh, social media played very important role during Haiti earthquakes. Social media played very major uh, role, and um, um, you know. As soon as a disaster is um, um, either you know forecasted uh, in 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 cases like hurricane, in a case of earthquake, of course it is not forecasted. But as soon as you know, and then tsunami that occur in Asia, and then um, the uh, disaster that struck the Japan, the nuclear accident and tsunami, tsunami and nuclear accident. So um, in those days, uh, social media was very extensively used to find out what people are doing, what they need, what help they need. And then uh, the um, those uh, organizations like Red Cross with the capacity to help, they will uh, you know, reach out to people who need help. I, reach, I remember a very interesting case. Uh, we used to do a lot of work in uh, social media analysis. Uh, I have a friend um, uh, and professional fr you know, colleague in uh, Singapore uh, she kind of she was ahead of their kind of uh, I think uh, science and technology center the largest center in Singapore. She sends me a, a message saying uh, I cannot um, uh, reach my parents in Chennai. Uh, can you help me find? She knew I I we did research in uh, social media, and I think in four and a half hours I I sent her back a message saying, uh, look here is a um, uh, analysis of the tweets and the photographs shared on the Twitter uh, about the neighborhood in which your parents live. Uh, I could see that there is not much of a water there. Uh, so uh, the best uh, you know explanation is that so they are safe in that context, but the best explanation is that they have lost the power, which happened to be eventually you know they, that happened to, to be true. And uh, so, you know, there was a lot of opportunities like, uh, you know, for helping people uh, during, uh, we set up, uh, Hemant Purohit that I mentioned, uh, he set up um, a, an international uh, committee of volunteers um, where they would uh, find the tweets um, uh, seeking for help during Kashmir floods. Like the tweet could say, we are stuck on the third floor of a hotel and my child needs medicine. And they will take that and enhance it with the additional data and send it to army rescue office. And then army rescue office would, um, uh, you know, if assuming that they respond to that, that there'll be, there be other tweets and they'll monitor that and close the case. But anyway, there was coordination done uh, for help and other things. So anyway, uh, our working with social media, um, you know, ha has had a lot of positive thing. Now, in addition to the lack of uh, uh, free access to the social media content, and a massive amount of misinformation. And um, just today I read um, uh, the amount of uh, data on the internet that is now generated by uh, language models is exploded, has exploded. And that has led to, um, uh, you know, a lot of, because th there's hallucination and other issues that has led, lot, led to a lot of problems because um, it is a vicious cycle, this language model uh, like GPT, they get trained on you know massive you know any data that they can find. Well, that data itself that the quality is um, uh, has has deteriorated. So now uh, you know this uh, thing on relying on the data has become harder. In that context, um, uh, my team's approach uh, for incorporating knowledge and facts in doing so hopefully can give us some um, alternative. We call that neuro symbolic AI. You have heard that term before. Anyway, um, hope you enjoyed this talk. Manas, uh, I, I think uh, you went through these things very well. So, um, 
Okay. All right. Well, then that's that. Okay, guys.